let's go with this. So, welcome to Grumpy Grognard Gaming and a new look, maybe 7% more professional than we managed before, Matt. I'm, 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 I'm here with Matt, by the way. <laughs> there, goes the, there goes the professionality. <laughs> hey, what are you saying? I fully agree, though. I don't, I don't think people are here for professionality, uh, thankfully. I've just got back from watching um, South Park at cinema, the movie, so I'm, I'm actually quite hyped. So this could be interesting. Even less professional than usual. Uh, if that is possible. If that is indeed possible. Big, big floppy donkey dick. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's such a funny film. Right, okay, anyway, so seriously, we're going to talk about the, um, the GW news, and what we're going to do is we're also um, going to cover a subject that one of our watchers viewers victims uh, put across which is is competitive ruining um 40k and um me and matt might have a slight case of deja vu here because we've already recorded this once um <laughs> basically we recorded this and a uh, retrospective on the warhammer 40,000 white dwarf compendium um that came out after Rogue trader and sadly we were let down by technology and uh, neither of them are actually usable. So we've been that off, and I've, in the interest of getting things done quicker, have gone for this kind of semi-streaming solution where we're just going to record everything live with streaming software and video, but we're not actually streaming yet. We might do that in the future, not sure yet. Neither of us <laughs> are appearing on camera because we're far too ugly. So Matt has done these wonderful avatars for us. Um <laughs> potentially to shame me to do something <laughs> that I want to do, which is me as an inquisitor and Matt as a tech priest. But these are great. Oh, that's, that's my finest artwork. <laughs> these are great for now. It's been a very long time since I've done any. I'm going to put them right on the fridge, Matt. Right on the fridge. Um, yeah. And point... point for anyone that can identify what they are. Yeah, you might struggle more with Matt's, yeah. but if you can get mine, then that'll give you a clue. Uh, and it's not the Jolly gr um, Green Giant. So that's just, you know, <laughs> just to let you know. So <laughs> no, indeed. Also not, um, not God. Um, despite looks. No. So, <laughs> anyway, cracking on. So, sp um, 140,000 did bless us with two bits of news today, Matt. Um, <laughs> both rather underwhelming. I've done videos on both of them, so you can check those out individually if you don't want to hear us waffle. But we are here to waffle, and waffling is what we're going to do. No, not waffling. Waffling is a vowel rack thing. We're blithering. Blithering. Yes. British blighty bl bl blitherings um, on this episode of Chebs. Sponsored by Titty Combat. It's not. It's not spotted by. It's not sponsored by Titty Combat. In fact, I've not checked to see if I have replied to my email yet. So I have to have a look at that later. Anyway, without Titty further Combat ado, like an entirely different website. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> someone should no, make a. Someone should make a porn site called Titty Combat, <laughs> and, and literally, it's nothing but naked wenches with like battle swords and shields and you know like broadswords. Broad Souls. Oh man, there used, be a, there used to be a website like that way back in like the mid '90s. Someone clearly got onto that bandwagon well before its time. Well before its time, because I'm, I'm, I'm. The more I think about this, more I'm thinking like this could make more money than Grumpy Grognard Gaming by far. <laughs> <laughs> by far, I'm not sure that our uh, significant others would be too, too, too chuffed. But um, other than that, it'd be all right. Anyway, so back onto the Warhammer Forty Thousand news. Team up and clear out a Space Hulk. Yay! Amazing! 35th anniversary in Space Marine Adventures Tyranid Attack. Yeah, what? <sighs> Fuck's sake, Games Workshop. So, basically, what this is, and somebody on the video that I've done has said that this is basically a clone of the Necrons into the Labyrinth. From what they can see, they've literally just printed some new Tyranid tokens and put Space Marine, uh, this Space Marine squad into it. Um, but everything else is apparently the same. So, like, putting well, the rules into uh... the same. It's certainly a very, very faint shadow of the original Tyranid attack, which, uh, which, if I remember rightly, was based on the old Advanced Space Crusade. So yes, it was. Yeah, because it had like scouts and Terminators, Tyranid warriors, hybrids, and Gene Stealers in, in it, uh, from what yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, 1992. A a lot more stuff than this. Yeah, oh, God, yes. This is this is pretty pathetic. I know what it is, and like I said in my video, I know what this is. It's a throwaway little silly game to get 12-year-olds playing Warhammer. I get that. I understand that. I totally understand what Target Market is, and it's actually appearing, it's appearing in Target, exactly. Yeah. And I, I, I know that. I understand that. But my point of view is that it's lazy 
and they could do more. And they definitely I mean, could have mentioned Space Hulk in this. Even back in the day, we had Space Crusade. Yep. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, Games Workshop, I know you're probably not likely to team up with MB Games ever again. If they're even still a thing, they probably got eaten by Hasbro or something like that. I, do, I don't think MB exists anymore because obviously no, um, they didn't release Hero Quest. Hero Quest was Hasbro. Uh, Avalon Hill, I think it is. Okay. Then, yeah, they definitely got eaten by Hasbro yeah. then. But, like, yeah, like, the Space Crusade was... Whereas I wasn't really a fan of it because by the time that came out, I'd already been well into Space Hulk. Yes, so yes, to, yeah, exactly. Once, once Space Hulk came out, Space Crusade pretty much no longer existed for me. Same yeah. as Hero Quest. I loved Hero Quest, but as soon as I got my um, got into Warhammer Quest, I was like, "Oh, like, this is Hero Quest, but actually good kind of thing." Uh, you know. So yeah, I never had the original Warhammer Quest, so I, I quite appreciate Hero Quest. I'd love to get my hands on Advanced Hero Quest at some point, but I don't. Yeah, think I never played really Advanced Hero Quest. Apparently, it's very much an in-between game. Mm. So it's like Hero Quest, but with some of the Warhammer Quest mechanics chucked in. I uh, yeah. certainly think it might be looking worth looking into. Um, I also imagine it's quite expensive these days. I mean, yeah, why I mean, GW no, won't just remake might. Warhammer Quest? I don't know. They could even literally might, remake it, yeah. sell it at 300 quid, and people would buy it, because it goes for like 600 quid on eBay. Yeah, I mean, even Mike got a copy of it in a job lot. He did, lucky like bastard. I, and before I could go, oh, he'd already sold it to someone for like well over 100 quid, and I was like, I don't think I'd have paid that anyway. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah no, that's fair enough. So anyway, back to Space Moon Adventures. Here it is. Um, I, I've got a theory that... Their contract with Target or whoever actually stipulates that they have to produce a certain amount of these games per year. Probably. Because they just keep churning them out. So here it is, coming to a Target store near you and then other places allegedly later in the year. Whereas later in the year, what I really want to hear about is Space Hulk, preferably for Black yeah. Friday. It's not even a Dark Angel in sight. An outrage. Yep. No, I mean, it gets worse. It gets worse. Because obviously they've not given any reason why... There is one Space Marine from five different chapters, <laughs> all bundling. They're not Death Watch or anything. Like it would no, make sense not. if they put a fucking Death Watch squid squad in there, but it's just five rando Space Marines on yeah, a space Hulk together space. because of reasons. Reasons, and they're not even fighting Gene Steelers. It's bloody Termagants if you look at these uh, things. From what I can see, they look like Termagants. I can't be hundred percent oh, sure. It, does it says it says Tyranid creatures. But, I mean, the only tokens... They're all the same tokens, certainly. And the only ones I can see... I'm going to say Termagants. That might be Hormigants next to them. That'd make it a bit more like Space Hulk. I mean, the, yeah. the later... Any it might be Gene the, Steers, the actually, because they Hulk. have got... Enhanced 15 to 23. No, they are Gene Stealers. So we can't see the tokens for the Gene Stealers, but it's Termagants and Gene Stealers. And Termagants shouldn't be on bloody Space Hulks anyway, because they're not Vanguard organisms, Matthew. Oh, this is this is no. law inaccurate. This is bullshit. This is lazy bullshit. It's a mess. It is. I, I just don't know why they're doing it. I mean, a and, and, mess. you know, I understand target market, all that kind of stuff. But you had the opportunity here to kind of make people excited by maybe mentioning that a Space Hulk might be on the way. And, and literally all you had to do was leave some super ambiguous sentence in there. And all the fans will be picking it apart. Whereas what's yep. going on at the moment, where anybody who's like us, like Grognards or something, is just like, yeah, this is a complete non-event. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, I'm looking at it, I'm just like, well, it's coming to like elsewhere in, like later this year, and I'm like, don't care, don't want it. <laughs> you know? Um, I got Blitz Bowl, that's great. Um, I've played a few games of that yesterday, and um, the review for that is written, and I'll be recording it like real soon. Um cool. Provide GW doesn't do something else to make me do a video beforehand, mm -hmm. like announcing. Yeah, go next Imperial Agents. Yeah, thanks, Games Workshop, for not sullying our country with this Tyranid attack nonsense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, just not having any Tyranid models. I understand it's to keep the cost down, but the plastic is probably cheaper than the fucking cardboard. Yeah, well, I don't have to get the plastic from China. From this is what I'm saying. This is why I don't understand why they've done this, because. You need to get this all from China. That's where the cost comes. Mm. So I don't... Yeah, I don't quite... I, I, I reckon it's got to be something to do with their, their exclusivity contract with the American retailers like Barnes & Noble and Target. And obviously I don't know the... Um, I don't know the... Uh, Details. The, no, the, um, the connection between those two companies. I don't know if they're part of the same oh. retail group or what. I have no idea. You know, most of these companies are owned by some kind of conglomerate at the end of the day. 
But um, as well as that, because I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's a bit shit for a Monday reveal. GW went, ah, we hear you, and we're not going to give you Space Hulk. <laughs> but we are going to oh, announce no. Codex Imperial Agents. Hulk by Tankard. <laughs> exactly. Hold my cat Tankard of disappointment, for it is yet to be filled. So, um, well. Codex Imperial Agents, we knew it was coming. We're like, yeah, okay, cool. And as I said in my video, I can't comment on the little snippets of rules that they've given. It looks nice. I like that cover. I don't mind the fact that they've reused that artwork because that artwork is amazing. Yeah. Showing the enough. awesome Inquisitor um, Torquemunda Cotillaz, you know, looking good there. Um, it's a good cover. They've put a few little bits about, you know, bits and pieces that you can use and got some battle forces that we'll go through in a second. You've got some rules. If you're still playing 10th and this means something to you, fantastic. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. You know, good. I, I, I hope this is good. I hope this is good. As somebody who doesn't want to touch 10th edition, I have no idea. Yeah, Not a clue. It, this could be great. This could be crap. But you've got a little detachment rule there. It's just your standard little preview, you know. So CDs, I mean, you know, it's select one enemy on the battlefield until the end of the start, start of your next command phase, so basically an entire turn. Each time an agent of the Imperium army makes an attack, that targets that enemy unit. Add one to the hit roll. So it's basically like, um, what's the Oath of Moment? But I think Oath of Moment's re-rolls, and this is just add one to hit. I'm sure there's some way you can game it. Um, but this is what they do now. They just you know, give one of these little detachment rules, and that's your flavour these days. Um, I mean, the fact that they're still using this Inquisitor is hilarious, because he's tiny, and I know that because I've got him. He's like a proper 28mm model. Yeah. You put him next to a Primaris machine, and he's going to look ridiculous. But yeah, there's you know little rules about that. I guess that's... um an enhancement or something. And then they, they spoiled us by showing us, oh, oh. Barry the Baptist from Lockstock. Oh, um, yeah. So tell me quick, seeing as you have the original model, does it look like he would have the standard power pack hidden underneath his pelty cloak? No. Um, I've got the model, and yeah, I the, the, the cloak is pretty fine to it but obviously like there's no obvious power pack there he has got a great big so you see on here he's got the um the fur on one side yeah well the actual version has fur on both sides yeah uh, so give me just a second have a look at that awful model i mean, I, I really do it looks like a storm cast that it's went so wrong crap. and they've kind of trying to say say to turn it into something if you know what i mean it's so crap um so Why? It, it just kind Absolutely. of sucks absolute step back from the previous one and it just um it's awful here's the original which will now be on screen so you can see like you know it's painted the same way as well i mean don't get me wrong like the fidelity on the new one is kind of better but it's lost all the flavor it's lost all the intricate little bits that made it really cool and that kind of fifth edition which is i think is when this came out flavor yeah. And it's just it's just really boring. I mean, this version he's got like he's got scrolls round his leg, like in the codex cover. He's got a book and like little rosettes and stuff. And then he's got the eagle in his arm, and you it's know, nice. it just looks so much better. It really does. And all they need to do, the thing is, like I said, like a guy disagreed with me, but I said, look, basically, GW have been knocking it out of the park with these character remakes like the Asriel was really nice Dante was good yeah. Mephiston was amazing oh yeah and this is just I mean this is just not good it's really it's not ugly. good um yeah I mean and, and that is putting it politely so yeah not 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 super impressed if I'm being completely honest with you um <laughs> and then if I change it again then you'll be able to see my version still getting groups of the streaming software bear with us super professional as always <laughs> Ta-da! there it is so this is my version with my troll blades <laughs> um which is my fifth edition space marine army and um yeah it's a really nice mod i mean it could have a backpack under there but honestly, I, I just think like, the old one looks so much better. And the thing is, Matt, like, there is a 3D print of this, this sculpt, the old one, that is up on the, um, the purple site. Right. So you could easily just get that, rescale it, print it off, and there you go. There's your, there's your Torquemida. 
yeah. Cutty has, which would work a lot better. And yeah, I mean, I guess it is what it is at the end of the day. But I'm not, I'm not like super impressed. I'm just gonna stick it in the Discord so you can see it. My, my troll blade one. Oh god, no, that's not it. Look, if I copy that image, I expect that image to copy. Or is it because I'm trying to do? It? You see, the problem with doing streaming software is like you're clicking on the stream, but you're not actually technically clicking on the image. You're just clicking on the fucking on the video on, 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 on the, the streamed image there we go uh, that's in discord you can see it now with my troll blades and my nice chaplain that i painted yes there you go guys that was the old cotillards and um the new one is as i described him get your cotillards let's just get shot of that into Dude, the background yeah. and uh yeah I, I mean you know the conclusion is pretty unanimous from everybody i've heard this is a bad model i don't think anybody likes it um, pretty much all of the the comments on the the Facebook video were like, yeah, this is this is a little bit a little bit shit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the face in particular just looks so bad. It I don't know it is with GW bad. and faces at the moment. It looks like some kind of like weird monkey face. And like, why isn't he bald anymore? How do you grow his hair back? Why? So yeah, we got that, and then we got some um, battle forces. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these. Yeah, they're not bad. Um, yeah, I think these are quite nice, actually. I'm not a fan of the Auto Malleus one, but I do like the other two. So you've got, obviously, your Death Watch Squad, your Corvus Black Star. Uh, you've got the Inquisitor Drax, Dirax, Drax, I can't remember. Star Striders, Inquisitorial Warband, and the dude from Blackstone Fortress in the Auto Xenos yeah. one. And I think that's quite nice. I mean, these it's are probably going to be 130, I reckon. And I, de I genuinely don't know if I could describe that as an army. I, I think that's under a thousand points in all honesty i can't see it being over that yeah. um but yes yeah, it's quite nice i've painted up that inquisitor warband it's quite a nice thing to paint and then you've got the auto malleus one this is one i don't like this is the one that's kind of um a, a bit lackluster to me it's got two of the inquisitor warband which isn't too bad because like they're dual build most of them the scribe isn't i don't think but I think at least three of them are dual builds. You can do something there. But it's an old squad of the Grey Knight Terminators that's going to look titchy now. Inquisitor Cotillas, the wrong trousers, who looks even worse in this image. Um, a Calexus, and then the Flamey Bird from Blackstone Fortress. Yeah. And the Chimera. And I'm like, eh, that's a bit... Ugh. Like, my least favourite of the three. But then I think the Sisters of Battle, the Hereticus one's quite cool. It's a squad of sisters that can make a squad of Celestians with bolt guns that you can't use. Um, an emulator, a squad of Arbites. Actually, I think that's two boxes of the Arbites. Or is it? No, one. Ten models. That's probably one. Uh, and then the Inquisitor Warband and uh, Greyfax. So I kind of think that one's quite nice. So, you know, credit where credit is due. Those do look like quite cool battle forces. Certainly really nice for a painter's project, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know how useful they are in the game, but yeah, that Coteus is just not not good. I'm I'm kind of like really surprised they actually released that. Yeah, it's just not. <laughs> it's just like, and they're gonna because it's got a, a separate eagle on a bit of plastic. It's they're easily gonna want like, it's gonna be thirty quid. You know it is. Just to add insult. Um, uh, I think that eagle's the only bit that's better than the old one. Yes, I like I, I like the eagle. Um, the old one's actually not that well. It might be because mine's fine cast, but it's not actually that well defined. It was actually quite hard to paint. So, could this be converted to look better? Potentially, I guess. But should you have to? Not really. No. Not that um, so, yeah, I wasn't super impressed by that. And I've, I've done videos on both of those. If you guys want to check them out, have a quick look. Um, where I basically bitch a little bit. But I do say the Battle Forces are nice. So, you know, there you go. I'm not always negative. Um, but, yeah, that was your two main bits of GW news today. But the other thing that we were going to discuss was the topic that one of our victims put across which was is competitive ruining 40k and as we've re you know we've already recorded this once matt i think we can just say yes and just end, end it there yeah that's fine i'll play the yeah. music yeah yeah bye everyone bye thanks thanks for tuning in um we'll, we'll try and remember most of what we said um because the recording was cutting out and stuff and it was just like you know like when um you know when blackadder is trying to fake that he's not receiving his orders from general melcher but it's probably Darling, isn't it? It's probably Kevin Darling. And he's going like, you're cutting, he's getting like paper and crinkling it and stuff. 
it was like yeah. that like words were just cutting out and I couldn't make a full cohesive conversation or narrative out of it so I had to bin it off so that's why yeah, we're redoing it still doing it now which is a relief which is well I, I'm hoping using this streaming software that we're going to be good from now on out and yeah. we can pretend to be professional um <laughs> pretend yeah <laughs> don't expect too much guys um so yeah so obviously talk about this competitive thing when we first recorded this we hadn't seen this article so i did want to uh, you know, yeah. discuss this article quickly even though it refers to age of sigma that we're not really bothered about because I, I dare say they have the same feelings for 40k definitely it's management pushing it um and what they're talking about is casual matched play and collectively, I think all the gamers just went, okay? You is know? It like that bit from like the Naked Gun series where it's like slap the forehead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Forehead, well, I mean, you know, crowd. you know, like, like, I've, um, like I've got on my uh, um, uh, streaming uh, thing. Uh, if I move this. Oh, fuck. This is, this is getting to be a pain in the ass. Move that and move that. Face palp. Even spiders don't like it. That one's covered in pollen. Um, yeah, I did casual match play. The, the general thing from everybody was just like, "What? We just want narrative. We just want you know. We just want that nice fluffy game we want. We don't want you to say use the match rules. Just play casually because that's not what the match rules are. The match rules are for people that want to do the points and and you know a sort structured of game measure the, the penises and all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, for people who are taking it really seriously." And, you know, we want a proper game, don't get me wrong, but we just we just want to play, like, a chilled game without all this 33-page worth of rules commentary and all that kind of stuff. And we want the points back and, all, you know, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, I wanted to discuss this because they had some um, American chap on who seemed yeah, very nice, but he was talking about it all, and I was just like, this is just corporate bollocks to try and sell Spearhead. Yeah. And, and that really is just kind of like all I get out of it, if you know what I mean. So yeah, from that perspective, I was just like, yeah. So I was just, I was just looking at my um, my bookmark bar, and I was just like, oh man, no, nope, they're all safe. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Jeez. <laughs> right, okay, we're okay. There's nothing. There's nothing dodgy there. Not that I would have any particularly dodgy bookmarks, but you never know what's on there. But no, we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Um. I'm glad you stopped digging at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that it's that naked ladies with the broadsword, broadsword, um, that link. Uh, it's roosters. I was approaching them for um, sponsorship for Chebs. What can I say? Roosters. Roosters. Oh fuck! No, that's a chicken place. Um, Hooters. Hooters. Ah, that's the one. <laughs> roosters. Yeah, roosters is the, roosters is a peri peri chicken place. Yeah, no, no yeah, d- different. Different, different types of chicken and, and breasts. Um, so yeah, they've done this. Um, they've done this casual match play. It's, it's not fooling anybody, you know. They're basically turning around saying, "Look, here's your narrative version. Just play match play and just play it casually." And we're like, no, no, it's not what we want. It's not what we want. No. We want a proper different version of the game. I think at this point, I can't speak for Age of Sigmar because I'm not. Don't play it. I haven't looked at it really. But certainly in 40k. Tenth doesn't interest me. I want the points back. I want the granularity. I want my list building back. I want the Absolutely. fun and the narrative feel of it back. I don't want yep. this ultra competitive, stripped down, stupid game that's just designed so you get a hundred points. Yep. Um, I did watch a um, an Age of Sigma battle report on Play on Tabletop, Skaven Tide, um, and it did look quite good actually. It wasn't the same kind of thing. There was certainly no secondary, primary objectives from what I could see. There was something called um battle tactics and stuff like that instead and i was like oh that, this looks better than 40k so what i'm thinking is what generally happens is each version of each core game borrows from the previous version of the other core game with its mechanics the yeah, aos being better than 40k is something i never ever thought i'd hear any of my close friends say it's ridiculous ever. isn't it yeah absolutely ridiculous and yet skaven tide still isn't selling they've announced the starter sets yet um now but um, the stores, like the third-party retailers, still all have at least 10 copies left. And if they've got like 10 copies left, you can bet they've got a lot more than that left. It's just, it says 10 plus. It could yeah, be the 100, yeah. who knows. Um, 
Whereas I'm pretty sure Leviathan at this stage, like three weeks after it was pre-ordered or four weeks after it was pre-ordered and it's in people's hands, pretty sure it's on the verge of like pretty much selling out now. Like it was getting harder to find, certainly. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. Um, but I do think that Skaven Style has not sold quite as well as they, they want due to it being a £160 box. Um, which is a shame because you know, I thought the value was there and apparently Spearhead is, is a lot of fun. But I will say the, the game I watched on Play on Tabletop did degenerate into exactly what I thought it would degenerate into, which is a big brawl in the middle of the board. Isn't that AOS all over, though? It's always done that. It's always done that, exactly. And I was kind of hoping it might do something different and a bit more tactical. So I remain to be convinced. But, you know, it, it did look like fun. I'll give it that. And I did learn a little bit about playing it. But it just doesn't... The, the, the background, if it doesn't make me want to play it myself. Even now. I bought some Skaven to put into Curse City. And I bought the Reclusians because I, like, I think I want, I want to paint them. And that was it, really. So I'm not... You know, Age of Sigmar just doesn't... It doesn't grab me, unfortunately. Um, almost the same way as 40k doesn't at the moment. And I'm all about the heresy. Come on, get those, uh, get those Mechanicum to us, please, GW. Like, you know, preferably in the next couple of weeks we'll actually have some money. That'd be nice. So, yeah, um, match casual or casual match play. Um, I don't know what you're thinking is, Matt. I'm just like, this is just corporate bollocks. It's, it's just buzzword bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Buzzword really? bullshit. But, it, like, yeah, I mean, uh, match play is to me like the standard way of playing given that we're old school players we've always had points limits and you use the force org chart yeah exactly uh, yeah you know and all the stuff that we're used to doing that provides structure. well match play is how you ensure that the matches were equal you well, know, well, play a skill aside you, but that's what it is it's matched play well yeah you, you use the points to match your force fit to your opponent's exactly value. yeah exactly it's that. not there for for matches as in a game Yes, no, 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 no. I never match. saw it that way. I never saw it that no, way. No. Yeah, but yeah. it's a little bit of a open to interpretation now. They've kind of gone, oh, casual match play, and it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no casual match play. There's just match play, and you use that in tournaments. Yes, like, yeah. The casual doesn't come into it. It just yeah. works for both. I mean, like casual match play just means you're playing in a tournament, but you don't care if you win, or like you're you're playing so casual you don't care if either player wins. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, that sounds a bit shit. <laughs> if I'm being completely yeah. honest with you, like, I do play to win. I just, you know, I don't play to win at all costs. I'm not that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I don't win, as long as I have a fun game, I don't care. And generally, yeah. playing with you guys, I would have a fun game. I'm glad I, you would. I don't anything. think I don't think I've ever had a game playing against any of you lot that I've not had fun. <laughs> um, you know, like our proper games, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like, and that's yeah. not just because I was always winning with my Necrons. Even in, when I stopped using the Necrons and you know I was playing games and stuff, um, I was still having I was still having fun with you guys. That's why I like gaming you with you guys, and that's why <laughs> that's why we were quite reluctant to let other people randoms into our group. Yeah, um, until you know, it kind of became a necessity. <laughs> a necessity. An, an unknown element. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, the only that's it. We invited just... in were people that we knew. Exactly. We yeah, people we knew. Like... We we knew they would be like you know sort of um, not divs. Yeah, I mean, just it's an unknown element. Is you, you don't want to upset it. You don't want to bring somebody in who suddenly just upsets one person. That person doesn't want to play and everything. You know, you want yeah. everybody to get on at the end of the day. As I've always said, a game is a contract between two people to have fun. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the using, idea. Using forty k as a framework to get there. And if one person's out. not having fun because um, you keep doing charge turn one charges with your wraiths and then bring them back on turn three, then it's it's time to stop using that and do something else. So that's what happened. Time to get new friends, yeah. I'm going to get myself a new gaming group with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> Good lord. So yeah, that was casual match play, and I was generally just like, no, that's just that's just bullshit. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just you're being lazy. Well, you don't want to develop a different game to actually give people the the beer and pretzel thing. That the majority, in my opinion, the majority of people want. I still think that ca um, competitive play is an absolute minority. Maybe not in the terms of spending and revenue and all that kind of stuff because they'll cycle armies and buy a new army just to you know because it's the new hotness and they might even not paint it and get somebody else to paint it you know i would love to get a general very wide uh cross section of who plays what you know do you play competitive do you play what we, you know what they would call beer and pretzels you know casual kind of games um, not crayon hammer, but like casual, you know, sort of like just a, a fun game rather than the competitive um, mindset. Uh, yeah. And those of you who do play competitive, how many of you actually paint your armies? That is the other interesting thing I'd like to know. How many people is it that the game is so important to them that they don't care about the modelling side of it? 
because there's a few at least you know what well, more than a few i would imagine i imagine out of competitive gamers i would estimate that that percentage is maybe even as high as 25 30 percent of people that yeah. will pay somebody to paint an army for them just so that they can play that game which is fine you know some people are just naturally more interested in the gaming side than the modeling side of it whether it's a matter of skill whether it's a matter of time maybe they just don't have the time to paint stuff and that's fine for me it's always been the hobbies and the models first yeah you know uh, there's some people who don't even play the game or have any models and they're just interested in the law and that's absolutely fine i would question whether or not it counts as the hobby but it's certainly immersing no. yourself in the ip <laughs> in a different yeah. way so you know you still count as a games workshop customer in my opinion just maybe not quite a hobbyist yeah, um, so you need to actually indulge in the hobby to to be part of the hobby yeah i mean whether that's gaming or miniatures wise i i do think that that is a valid point that you do need to in, engage you know with the physical side of it in some way or not, or not you know you can't just read the books digitally and say you're a hobbyist an enthusiast absolutely certainly oh, an enthusiast yeah, yeah. just not necessarily a hobbyist that's me just being elitist there sorry <laughs> um pedant's rule yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah so um yeah so we only got this casual match and i was there like, fuck all that off and we had a little survey on daka daka it was very small so we had this goon hammer one that was bigger uh, and was quite interesting. And if you direct your attention to the screen, people, you will see that most people saw themselves as a hobbyist first. Um, the competitive came in more or less the same as the na- the um, narrative, but casual was far ahead of that as well. Obviously, this is one of those weird things where you can choose a first and a second. So I do feel it's slightly skewed on that basis, but that's the way they wanted to run it. That's the way they wanted to run it. The fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, competitive was only 15 16%. Yeah, well, that's on Goonhammer, where people go to... And this is on Goonhammer, which, as we'll see, yeah, uh, people, people go the there game, for the competitive for stuff. in general. Yeah, not yeah. With the stick. So, you would, again, you would expect that to be skewed somewhat, because this is just from Goonhammer readers. Uh, and as I would say, I, I'd love to get just a general cross-section, because I think that GW is basically putting, like, 80% of their attention on an audience that makes up maybe 20% of the whole lot. You know, to the detriment of everyone else. To the detriment of everyone else, yes. Because I do, in answer to the question, I do feel like their focus on competitive play, which is most likely a ploy to secure the American market because they're much more serious about their game over there. Even though they do equally, you know, love their their beer and pretzels games, I'm not going to say they don't. The competitive scene over there just seems to be a thing. Yeah. You know, they've got these massive tournaments that they do. And obviously, there has always been tournaments uh, in 40k, you know, ever since, I imagine, second edition. Um, I don't remember any because I was very young and, you know, we was playing in a different way. But certainly, I know from third edition onwards, there was definitely tournaments. So I imagine tournaments have always been there, but they were never the focus of GW's attention, whereas no. now they are. And yeah. I feel that what, what GW is basically trying to do is turn Warhammer into an eSport. Yeah, and when they weren't messing around trying to do that, everyone had a much better game, which actually had a lot of depth. And yes, right? yes, I feel so. I also, I mean, you know, I've got other reasons why I think Warhammer Forty Thousand is suffering a lot at the moment, and one of those is it's far too bloated. Too many factions. I mean, we've just got another one, Imperial Agents, and too many units within those factions. Just makes it like, how do you balance that? You can't. How do you give all of those units and all those factions the attention that they deserve? You can't. You just can't. So a lot of them just get fucked over and then they're fucked over for like an entire edition unless they can do a meta watch fix that might fix some of it yeah. or something you know it's just like... yeah the only upside now is that they're fucked for a shorter edition than what they used to be yes yeah well yeah because you've got three four years three year turnover but then my, the other problem is obviously that even when it comes to their balancing and their faqs and all that kind of stuff all of that information on meta watch is just taken from that competitive scene so they're basically like, is this army winning at 50%? If it's winning around 50%, we leave it alone. If it's like well under 50%, like 40%, we have to try and fix it. And if it's over 50%, like 60% or something, for example, we have to nerf it. But the problem with that is you're just getting all that information from the competitive scene. So armies that aren't getting played in the competitive scene because they're not, you know, they're not competitive, basically, you're going to get a skewed amount of feedback. Because, yep. okay... 
maybe like I don't know, say for example, uh, Leagues of Attan, for example, are only winning at forty one percent. But if only eight people are playing Votan and eighty people are playing Space Marines, then that's massively skewed anyway. Yeah. In the same way, if everybody is winning with Eldar and everybody is playing Eldar, and a lot of your matches are Eldar versus Eldar, well then naturally that is going to go towards 50% of the bloody results. Because one Eldar player is winning, and one Eldar player is losing every single time. So it's naturally going to come back as 50%. This is why using competitive um, and tournament information to balance your game is basically fucking bullshit, GW. Do better. Listen to your players and I understand they got rid of the um, playtesting yeah I'm, I'm trying to cover remember what we said last time around yeah I'm like I'm like uh, um, I and I do remember that um, the one of the things we talked about was the playtesting now obviously in previous editions they had a dedicated legion of content creators and all that kind of stuff that were doing the playtesting um, and then there was leaks. There was lots of leaks. And because GW were not smart enough to isolate and identify the leakers, which would be really easy to do, all you've got to do is put an individual watermark on the fucking file that you send out and then see which one gets leaked. I mean, it is, it's yep. it's really not hard at all. They just cut all the playtesting and did it all internal instead. Uh, and the problem with that is they're clearly not up to the job. Because when you release the what I charitably call the beta version of Warhammer 10th edition, um, the indexes, yeah, and the, the Eldar are so horrifically overpowered that it takes you two or three swings at you know, nerfing them to get them right, then I'm going to say you've done fucked up. When it was literally a case of you could put an Eldar army on the table, table an opposing knight army... And then kill half that army again when it's put back on the fucking table. Yeah, you might have a balance problem, Perhaps. and that's fine in some ways if you're going to be narrative. Because if you're going to be narrative, maybe you can think of ways to you know counter it and stuff like that. But certainly, if you think you're going to be a tournament game, then that's not fucking good enough. So you've got to do better quality control, better playtesting. It also shows in the way that every time they release two codexes, one of the codexes is widely considered to be amazing, and the other one is considered to be absolute shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I remember saying at that point, like, isn't that a natural thing, though? Because one of them's always going to be perceived as being better than the other. Because, you know, it's very rare to get two codexes released and then people go, no, they're both awesome. Um, um, yeah, but I don't but, think you should be yeah. seeing the disparity that you were seeing, where yeah, people were like, look, the like orcs that. are amazing, but the Adeptus Custodes are borderline unfucking usable Well, I think the less said about that codex in general, the better, to be fair. You know, um, I don't think you should be in that situation. And yes, that is preferable to Codex Creep, which was a problem in the previous edition. Yeah. Um, oh, that was another thing that we mentioned, yeah, because like when I, I, I still remember... You were talking to uh, um, Simon oh, Bollocks. Simon. Simon, yes, it's Simon Grant. Simon Grant. Uh, I think it must have been the 7th edition open day at Warhammer World. Yeah. Uh, and I was talking to him and I was like, mate, I, I'm really impressed with the Tau Codex that you guys have done because, I oh, know, I think that was 6th. I said to, to him, like, look, the 6th the edition Codex is amazing, given that I never got a 5th one. So it was great to see, one, a Codex, yeah. and two, have it actually meet and surpass expectations in several ways. Uh, and he basically just said, yeah, well, we're actually sitting on a, a shitload of books at the moment that I wish I could talk to you about and show you, but I'm just, I, but I can't. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily mean thing, they're finished. But... That might mean they're being worked on as yeah, well. maybe. Um, which is something I wish I'd said last time we recorded, but I forgot until I was listening to it afterwards. I was like, ah, ah, ah. Fuck, I'm going to find Matt right now and go, ah, but. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we, we don't know. I mean, we know that the codexes are worked on well in advance. Um, I mean, we know they're working on 11th edition already. Absolutely, 100%. Does the 10th one shit. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, it used to be, from that from that very same open day, I remember there being like a panel, and it was, uh, I think it was like Jervis Johnson, and it might have been Phil Kelly. Uh, not Tony Cottrell then? No, not Tony. <laughs> not poor Tony. That was, this, that was way after this. 
uh, and they basically said uh, to the, the life cycle of a codex kind of comes from the the sculptors designing models that they want to sculpt because their creativity for what they want to do comes ahead of the rules so they do models first and then they try and fit them in with rules afterwards yeah that makes sense because, yeah because that's how artsy people get their best work done is when they're feeling artsy and they're allowed to pursue what they want to do uh and then he said it generally takes at least two years from sitting down and chatting about what they want to do with a new codex to it hitting a shelf and halfway along that about a year in is when they sort out the expensive part, which is the tooling for all the new molds and stuff and models and whatnot. Yes, so after, yeah. after a year, like the units and stuff are finalized and the tooling's all sorted out for molds, so they can start doing the sprues for release. But I'm assuming that up until a certain point in that last year, they're still working on the codex right up until they send the file off to China to get printed and sorted. Uh, and obviously, we don't know how long that takes. I'm assuming it takes a while. But... Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, you know, there's going to be a lead time. There's going to be sort of like, a, you'd like to think there's a first draft to check for mistakes and stuff like that. Yeah. Not that actually you know, happens, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, you would certainly like to think that uh, this happens. Um, and I don't know whether or not it does. Obviously, we don't no we are at the end of the day just speculating we are hobby veterans we have some inside knowledge i worked for gw for a little while um we both know people we can yeah we, we know people we could um we can speculate but that's all we can do but we like to think it's informed speculation for the most part so um we've got this um this survey here about like how often people play 40k uh, and it's quite interesting that 55 percent of people play fewer than one game a month um yeah, i mean we used to. We used to play four games a month. Yes, we used um, to play fairly regularly. Well, yeah, only although, twenty, only twenty-one percent play more than two games a month. Two point one percent of the total polled, and again, this is going to hammer, so it's skewed. Played more than a hundred games a year, and we never, we never managed a hundred games a year. No chance. A hundred games a year is two a week. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we're nothing <laughs> near that. That's like life goals. It's crazy. One during, it? yeah, it's one during the week and one at weekends. I was like, most likely not having a family and significant others yeah. and any sort of, um, what's the word? Help. Responsibilities. Well, Responsibilities. Yeah. That's the word. Obligations, yeah. Obligations. Very good. Very good. Yes, obligations. Um, so, yeah, um, I think, again, because it's Goonhammer, it's fairly skewed. Um, I mean, 82% of Age of Sigma played fewer than one game a month. Oof. That's really not many at all at the end of the day. Right. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of information, but I genuinely do suspect that GW is putting their attention in the wrong place. And it's whether or not that's because they represent the most um, value, whether or not it's because they think that that represents... A way to maximise revenue with minimum effort. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. You know, it like we, we would have to put a load of effort into doing a narrative version of the game. And these people are probably not going to rush out and buy a brand new army because it's the best thing. These people are most likely going to carry on using the army that they've had for the last 15 years. And we don't want that. We want people yeah. buying new models, and the best way to do that is to drive the game through competitive play. But I argue, and you obviously agree, that that is basically just killing off the game. Yeah. Um, effectively, that it's, it's not doing the game any favours at all. Um, I'd like to think that it could change, but after seeing this whole. Um, Casual, casual matched play thing. I'm like, no, they're not. They're clearly not. They're just going to try and gaslight everybody, essentially. Uh, yeah, yeah, doubling down. You can try and it's gaslight everybody. That this is this is narrative. You're just going to use these rules and just not care as much. And apparently that's going to fix things. And I'm just like... Mm. Well, I think the, the sad thing is that I suspect that Games Workshop don't think that it's broken. 
No. The concept um, that is, obviously they thought the rule set was broken, otherwise they wouldn't have spent, like, what, a year fixing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and as I said, everybody who bought 10th edition, Leviathan and Index Card, you were playing a beta. You're yeah. basically beta testing that game for GW for them to fix it. Uh, I said it at the time, I have not been convinced otherwise in any way. Uh, the fact that they released a 33-page fucking core rules commentary just, I think, explains just how beyond fuck the game is. Yep. Um, it's in a bad place. And I don't think, Matt, in general, that this this perception is, is isolated. I've seen a lot of other people saying the same thing. I mean, Liam uh, Dempsey was saying that he feels that Age of Sigma has single-handedly revitalised his hobby interest. His hobby, yeah, I saw that. You know, because he, he kind of, I wouldn't say hate, but he was having that much of a problem with... Um, getting 40k working the way with, he liked. With getting, yeah, getting 40k working. Um, yeah, I, I guess you would say to like a, a way that he likes, um, in that he... He obviously likes his games and everything, but I think because of the way he plays, and he's not really a tournament based player and stuff, um, I do kind of feel like he may be. There you go, guys. You can look at my look at my squad of terminators and um, cut he has. Um, I, I do think that he views it differently to some other people, like maybe Winters and something like that. And I know Winters has always got problems with. 40k and he said he much rather play heresy i know he liked the um the new prior nexus cards that came out but at the end of the day gw we shouldn't be spending spending 20 quid for your consumer to have to spend 20 quid sorry to fix your stupid fucking game you know i shouldn't buy the game and a core book that is largely completely useless now as we said in the previous video and then have to buy a £20 pack of cards to make that game more fun. Does, that, does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It sounds... You shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to throw good money after bad to make a game more fun. Yeah, it'd be like an, a AAA game releasing and then putting a patch behind DLC. <laughs> yeah. Which nobody's done yet, but you know, don't put it past EA or Ubisoft. Yeah, um, sorry that the game wasn't what you were expecting. If you buy this expansion, it'll be what you want. And it's like, you should have put that in in the first place. Really. Yeah. And it sounds hypocritical in some ways, I understand, because I imagine if GW was to put out a narrative expansion, we would buy that without too many complaints. You know, there might be a little bit of grumbling, that oh, you're making something pay for it, but we'd probably buy it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if GW put out a, uh, a book that was, like, purely narrative and was like, here's your points back and all that kind of stuff for your war game, we're like, okay, well, you know, don't like the fact that we've got to pay for it, but at least you've given it to us, do you know what I mean? We understand, obviously, there's some kind of development cost, production cost, blah, 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 blah. We understand that. Um, and because it's not... It, it's giving you something different, I think we'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe fair enough. I don't know. I don't know, because GW hasn't done it. So I can't say. But all we can say is that in answer to the question, uh, did competitive focus ruin 40k? And I, I think the competitive focus is as a result of GW going after the American market, which is obviously the biggest market in the world. We understand that. You know, our little tiny British island is massively outnumbered by the United States of America population wise. Um, and there's a much bigger market for them out there that have obviously embraced this silly little British hobby that was you know, invented back in 1988, 87, I think. I can't remember, which is bad because we did retrospective. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of feel like uh, it's taken 40k in the wrong direction. And each successive edition that comes out, I like the game less and less. Yep, since 8th. Um, since 8th, yeah. 8th like was the last version that I played properly. Played, I think couple of games in ninth maybe and um not touch tenth at all yeah so horace heresy on the other hand looks great because it's based on seventh and it is great it's lots of fun you know um so yeah i mean is there anything else you want to add on that and as i say we're not we're not having a go against people who are competitive if that's the way you want to enjoy your game 
great. You know, I'm glad that you get so much out of it. I genuinely am. Genuinely glad that the game does what you want it to do. But there are a lot, and I mean a lot of people, the majority, and I firmly believe it is the majority, who want something different out of the game and they're not being catered to. And I think that is at the detriment of the overall game. Yep, I agree. Um, you know, I, I think that is the, the fairest way to put it. So uh, I think we've covered that in fairly quick time. No doubt we have forgotten something from previous recording because we're not well, as inspired. But at the same time, I like to think that because we've discussed this twice now, we've just become more efficient at it. Yeah, true. So, you know, we're able to cover it all a little bit quicker. But yeah, let us know what you, what you think down below. You know, are we right on this one? Are we are we not right? Or maybe we've just got it completely wrong. I don't think we have. I think, although it's skewed, I think the, the statistics speak for themselves. And as I say, you bear in mind that's Goonham. That's a, a website that's designed for, uh, okay, for competitive people. Players. Yeah. You know, so if anything, you would expect that's to skew it the competitive way, not the casual way. Uh, and even then, it's, it's in the minority by far. But... Yeah, I think I don't think GW are going to change. If I'm being honest, I think that we may well have to look at specialist games to provide our our hobby yep. gaming we'll material. So. You know, because they're doing the good shit. They're the old school guys. They're not part of this new Crap. ideology, I suppose. <laughs> like, uh, you know, a, a gaming ideology rather than a political yep. ideology no, or anything. No. Uh, at GW, they're the old school guys. You know, they're, they're they're the guys who worked on previous editions. They're the guys who have still got that mindset as opposed to the new mindset. And I don't think that is the right mindset because. GW desperately want to turn Warhammer into a brand and all that kind of thing. And I almost think that GW, their perception of GW of, of Warhammer as a game is massively reduced to what it used to be because they've got all yeah. this other stuff. It's like we want to make it a TV pro service. They're probably looking at movies. They want it to be T-shirts. They want it to be, you know, action figures and all this stuff. They don't just want it to be a game. And when it was just a game back in the day, I just feel that was when it was at its best. Yep. Yeah, so... Yeah, you know, time will tell. Maybe they'll prove us completely wrong. Maybe they'll have a massive change of heart and, you know, fix everything. But I, 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 I don't see it. I don't see it at the moment. I think I think they want to turn it into an e-sport, a lucrative e-sport, if it gets popular enough, um, and, and go from there. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But at the moment, 100%, I don't think Warhammer 40,000 is for me. Nope. Certainly, I don't think I could get, try and get Kirsty to play it the way it is at the moment. She loves well, Blitz Bowl, but I'll, I probably couldn't get her to play Blood Bowl because it's, it's too, too complicated. I'm working up to it. You know, after a few more games of Blitz Bowl, I'll start pushing it towards Blood Bowl. Yeah, don't start with Dungeon Bowl. Uh, she <laughs> loves Dungeon Bowl, mate. It's more complicated than the normal one. Nope, she loves Dungeon Bowl. Bonkers. Um, but obviously, it's, it's not the same kind of positioning as Blood Bowl. Yeah. And there's not as many like special rules and things to worry about. And in Blitz Bowl, there's none, as I say in the review. But certainly, Warhammer 40,000, I, I couldn't put an army... I couldn't put 1,500 points in front of Kirsty and put 1,500 points in front of me and try and run for a game. Wouldn't want to. You know, the marriage... The engagement would be over very, very quickly. <laughs> um, whereas in previous editions, I feel like I could. And I did, yeah. with 7th. And maybe 8th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, definitely 8th, because that was the um, Indominus box, wasn't it? Yes. With the neck ones in it. Yep. Uh, no, no, no. Eighth was Dark Imperium, actually. Ninth was Indominus. So it must have been Dark Imperium. But I was probably using my Necrons anyway because I still had the Necron army. But she she got that. She gathered that. I get the feeling if I try to show a tenth, she, she'd struggle. Even though it is allegedly simplified, not simple. Huh. You know, whatever GW. You also said it was going to be least le less lethal and um, less re-rolls. And that was all bollocks as well. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's... That's not what you think, guys. Maybe you think we're completely off base. Maybe you think we are being unnecessarily grumpy grognards. Um, you know, I, I don't think we are personally. I think, you know, I think our our views are shared by some, if not all. Um, <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. You know, I, I do think that the competitive gamers are in the minority, but I think they're probably the most active gamers. They're probably the ones that spend the much the most so therefore they tend to rise to the top and as i said in the previous video the non-playing side because obviously there is going to be a, you know the hobbyist side as goonhammer said that don't play the game and just paint the models for painting the models because they are amazing pieces is probably higher than that as well because of 
you know, as I said before, I don't think anybody really gets into bolt action just to paint an army. I think if you've got a bolt action army, you play the game. Yeah. You know, with all the you know, respect to uh, Warlord in the world, I don't think those models are photogenic. Anybody picks them up and goes, oh, well, uh, I really want to paint that just as a painting project. There's probably a couple, but, you know, I, I think it's a, a massively low proportion, whereas I think a lot of people probably buy GW models just to paint. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, so they've got that hobbyist side sewn up and they obviously think they've got the competitive side sewn up. But in the meantime, us narrative guys that want to play a nice narrative game or, you know, a nice fluffy mission that's not got with the second... Point rules. Yeah, yeah, with actual you know, war, war gear rules that's not got primary and secondary objectives. It's just got like a nice fluffy objective. You know what I mean? Like, yep. back in second edition, you had secret objectives. You had like, you know... I, I don't know, man. It's, it's hard to say, because like, 7th edition, you had like your standard objective, and then you had like, plus one point for Slay the Wall, or plus one point behind enemy lines, uh, and First Blood. And that just seemed to work really well, man. Yeah, it did. You know, that oh, was fine. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you've got a tied game at the end of turn four, then, you know, maybe in that last turn, you maybe try and grab that extra point by getting behind any lines or slaying the wall. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like at the moment where it's like, well, you know, I'm 30 points behind going into turn three, uh, turn five. I'm not going to win. But oh, that's all right. Games Workshop said I can do the gambit thing that nobody's ever used, ever. <laughs> you know, I just, yeah, I, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't see it. But then we are grumpy quadnard gamers, and that is what we do. Um, I'm really hoping that due to the way we're recording this video, I will literally be able to get this out tomorrow. Oh, that'd be nice. Like, I'll dive into the video file, which is recorded through the streaming software, make a couple of like, r tiny edits to cut out any erms and any mistakes or anything we say, um, my, my coughing, for mm -hmm. example. Mm. And then I can just go, right, great, save, upload, do a sneaky thumb that, thumbnail saying, Games Workshop of Cunts or something. Um <laughs> And <laughs> piss people off and lose subscribers. You know, that, but, but I'm, I'm hoping that what this, me and Matt doing it this way will mean that we'll be able to get much more content up, which would be nice. Because it'd be nice not to have to spend like a whole week editing our, our blitherings and our chebs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what we think, guys. And we will catch you later. Yeah, Adios. Al. Al. Well, what? I'll catch you on Saturday. You will, yeah. Are you um are you coming here or are you just going to meet up at One World? It's probably better to meet up at One World, isn't it? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, it's like a 10, 15 minute walk for me. So, yeah, yeah it sounds really good. After. Oh, yeah, no, nice. Um, Trust me. I'm, honestly, I'm just worried about you going into a bus lane by mistake and you getting a fine or something. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. Mark's driving, it'll be fine. All right, fair enough. I'll be fine. Okay, <laughs> cool. I'm, um, I'm going to cheat, cheat on my keto and get a Bugman's because I've not had one for fucking ages. So, <laughs> Right, nice one. So I'll see you on Saturday, and yep. we will see you guys. Well, and anyone else that turns up now, we told them. In the next video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, they don't know what we look like. If you, if, you, if you wander around looking for these avatars that we've got here, you might. Yeah, except that I'm lucky. not grey and Al's not green. Yeah, I mean, like, if you squint, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting a mask on. But if you do see us and you think it is us, then feel free to say hi. Because that would make us feel special, Matt, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Be like, oh, wow, we're people. Yeah. Until I get the patches made, at least, and then we'll have, we'll have comfy cooking our patches that we can... Yeah, that'd us. be weird. And then people will just start attacking us at Warhammer World and in the street. I used like, to oh! rarely when I was in a band. Hey, mate, are you the guy from... And I'm like, actually, yeah. Because <laughs> like, okay. I was the bass player, so no one really gives a shit about a bass player unless they sing as well. But then you are quite um, distinctive, Matt. Yeah, you could say. I mean, me, I look like most metalers. Like, True. Just, just most dudes. I mean, I have been mistaken for people in bands loads of times. I went to Bloodstock in 2009, and the whole weekend, people coming up to me going, are, are, you, are, you, in, are you in the band? Like, uh, I think it was Divine Chaos. They're still going, yeah. actually. Oh, for um, a while ago, yeah. Yeah, that's me. And in the end, I got so fed up. No, in the end, I got so fed up. I was like, yeah, yeah, I was. And then the funny thing is, I went to see the band later. And the guy who'd asked me was in front of me. <laughs> and he, he like looked on the stage and then looked back at me and then done this really weird double take thing, like this really comedic double take thing. I was just like, I was just like, I was fucking drunk, I didn't care. 
<laughs> Fun times. Anyway, I'll have to edit out the previous goodbye, Matt. And now we need to put this one in. So <laughs> let us know what you think, guys. We will catch you later. And I will see, see you on yeah. Saturday, Matt. Bye. Indeed. Bye. Bye.